September 12, 2025, astronomers spot something impossible, a colossal object streaking in from deep space, its tail stretching five times the width of a full moon, dwarfing anything seen since Oumuamua. Within hours, a second visitor is confirmed, both racing toward the sun for a close pass mere weeks apart, yet arriving from opposite corners of the sky. The official story, twin comets, but the evidence points to something deliberately engineered. A bigger mystery object is now entering our solar system with a mission nobody can explain. Is this an interstellar accident or the first move in a secret operation that's been triggered by us? The answer starts right here. Don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this unfolding mystery. On September 12, 2025, the spacecraft's SWAN instrument caught something that stopped astronomers cold. A new object, bright and unmistakable, blazing through the solar system. Within hours, the first data poured in, a tail stretching nearly two fanfaras across the sky, which is about five times the width of a full moon. That kind of scale is unheard of for a newly discovered comet. Initial photometry put it at magnitude 7.4, bright enough for small backyard telescopes and even some binoculars. The news spread fast, and amateur astronomers scrambled to confirm what the satellites had picked up. In Australia, just two days after the satellite alert, an observer captured a dramatic image of the object, a streak of light so long it threatened to spill out of the camera's field. By September 13th, the International Astronomical Union had made it official, naming the object C2025R2 with the tag SWAN in recognition of the instrument that first spotted it. Within a weekend, both the professional and amateur communities were locked onto this thing, trading images and brightness measurements across hemispheres. The sheer size and brightness set off a wave of speculation. Most comets discovered in the modern era are faint, often requiring powerful telescopes to see at all. Swan, on the other hand, was visible to anyone who knew where to look, its tail slicing through the constellation Virgo and growing brighter as it drew closer to the sun. The initial reaction wasn't just excitement, it was disbelief. This wasn't just another icy visitor from the outer reaches. The numbers didn't fit any recent precedent. As the reports piled up, one thing became clear. Swan was physically dominating the inner solar system in a way that hadn't been seen since the days of hale Bop, or even further back. The amateur community, often the first to spot changes in brightness or odd behavior, was already debating what could possibly drive a tail this long and this bright. For now, the object was simply too big, too vivid, and too fast to ignore. And as the world's telescopes tracked its path, the question shifted from what it was to why it had arrived now, and whether its timing was just the first part of a much stranger puzzle. 2025 R2, now officially known as SWAN, is not the only newcomer drawing attention this October. Just days before its discovery, another object, 3i Atlas, was already inbound, making its own approach from a completely different sector of the sky. Swan's path traces back through Aquarius, while Atlas entered from the direction of Sagittarius. On a star map, these two arrival vectors are separated by more than a quarter of the celestial sphere. Yet both objects are set to reach their closest point to the Sun, perihelion, within the same 10-day window. For Swan, that moment comes around October 20th, at a solar distance of about 150 million kilometer. For Atlas, it is October 17th, just three days earlier, skimming past the Sun at roughly 23 million kilometer. That puts their perihelion points only about 50 million kilometer apart, closer than Mars ever gets to Earth. This is not just a matter of overlapping dates. The geometry is striking. Both objects are on steeply inclined orbits, with Swan's path tilted more than 60 degrees off the ecliptic, and Atlas nearly perpendicular to the plane of the planets. Their approach angles are so different that by chance alone the odds of both crossing the inner solar system at almost the same time and at such similar solar distances are vanishingly small. Astronomers who track long-period comets and interstellar objects are used to randomness. Arrivals scattered across the calendar with perihelia spread out over months or even years. But here, the two brightest new objects of the decade are converging on the Sun in near synchrony, each from a different corner of the sky. The timing adds another layer. As both Swan and Atlas sweep through their closest solar approach, Earth's telescopes are effectively blinded. From October 8th to 18th, 
the sun's glare blocks direct observation, creating a blackout window that covers the critical days when any unusual behavior would be most visible. That means the moment of closest proximity, both to the sun and to each other, happens just out of reach, with no way for ground-based observers to watch events unfold in real time. To get two such objects from such widely separated origins hitting perihelion within days, and at nearly the same solar distance, all during a period when the sun itself shields them from view, defies the usual expectations of chance. In the language of orbital dynamics, this is a corridor, a narrow window in space and time that both objects occupy together. Whether it is coincidence, a hidden link, or something engineered, remains an open question. But the geometry alone is enough to make even the most skeptical astronomer pause. Iatlas first drew attention not for its brightness, but for the way it broke the rules. Early spectrographs from the Atlas Spectral Lab Group reported something that set off alarms, a body dominated by nickel with virtually no iron in the mix. That runs counter to everything known about comets, which almost always show iron-nickel blends in their vapor. The claim was so unexpected that some labs immediately called for the data to be rechecked, sparking a calibration controversy that spilled onto astronomy forums and triggered a wave of independent reviews. The debate only intensified with the next round of measurements. Instead of the classic water vapor signature, 3i Atlas's coma pumped out carbon dioxide at rates five times higher than water. The 4.3 micron CO2 line dominated every spectrum, while H2O barely registered above the noise. That's rare, but not unheard of in cold origin comets. What couldn't be explained away so easily was the behavior of the tail. Observers tracking Atlas's motion noticed a pattern, three distinct accelerations, each spaced about two weeks apart, each coinciding with a sharp change in tail color. The first pulse was logged on July 29th, the second on August 14th. Photometric data showed a sudden jump in brightness while the spectral slope shifted from reddish to nearly neutral, then back again. These so-called D5 pulses weren't smooth like the gradual push from solar heating. They came on fast, then faded, as if the object had fired a thruster. Peer reviewers pushed back, pointing to the risk of calibration drift or hidden systematic errors. But the Atlas Spectral Lab team defended their findings, arguing that the timing and magnitude of the pulses matched up across independent observatories, from the Abero Tracker Network to Bill Gray's Distributed Telescope Array. The numbers didn't behave like typical outgassing. The tail's CO2 mix seemed to modulate in sync with each acceleration, a phenomenon some began calling thrust mix modulation. What really set the rumor mill spinning was the energy estimate. If the observed accelerations were real, the implied power source inside Atlas would need to deliver something on the order of 10 gigawatts about the output of 10 large nuclear plants. That's far beyond what any known comet nucleus can muster, the mainstream view still holds that natural processes can account for most of the data. But the gaps, especially the nickel-only spectrum and the stepwise accelerations, have kept the engineered object hypothesis alive. For now, the Atlas anomaly file remains open, with each new dataset fueling both skepticism and speculation. C-2025-R2, now simply called SWAN, stands in a league of its own. The numbers tell the story a tail stretching too far to measure with ease, a brightness peak that rivals the best comets of the last century, and a core that, if the wildest estimates are even close, could be pumping out 10,000 gigawatts of energy. That's more raw output than the entire power grid of Earth, and then some. But it isn't just the scale that has people talking. It's the claims coming from the fringes of the astronomical community, claims that Swan is armored, shielded, hand powered in ways that stretch the limits of current physics. The first whispers started with the reflectance data. Standard comet nuclei scatter sunlight in a predictable way. But Swan's core reflects light with a sharp metallic signature. Some amateur spectroscopists argue this match is not just nickel, but a nickel-cobalt blend, materials chosen on Earth for their strength and resistance to corrosion. The term nickel-cobalt hull began circulating in chat rooms and late-night podcasts, fueled by the object's stubborn refusal to break apart or dim as it closed in on the sun. Then came the reports of an optical anomaly, a persistent silvery halo around the nucleus, 
shifting in pattern and intensity. To some it looked like a plasma envelope, a kind of electromagnetic shield that could deflect solar wind and cosmic debris. That's where the fortress nickname comes from. Unlike 3i Atlas, which acts more like a drone, quick, agile, and oddly efficient, Swan presents as a tank, slow, steady and seemingly invulnerable. The tail, already record-breaking in length, pulses with micro-thrusts that defy simple outgassing models. 